Hi guys, and welcome back to another edition of What's Joined My Movie Collection. Um, so guys, before we get into it, I just wanted to start by thanking everyone who has stuck with these videos, everyone who's tuned in every month to, to see what I've picked up and added to my collection, and all the awesome comments you guys have been leaving saying that you're enjoying the videos and asking me questions as well about certain movies. Um, guys, you can probably tell that on my videos there's no advertisements, um, no adverts before them. Um, I'm not getting sent any of these editions to be reviewed from the studios. So basically making no money from this channel. Um, I'm just solely doing these videos because you guys are uh, enjoying them and giving me awesome feedback. And that makes it fun for me to do. So um, yeah, let's, uh, let's get into it and start with this month's edition. So first of all, we have got here one of Film Arena from the Czech Republic, one of their Maniacs boxes. So I've said before, guys, a few times now that these are some of my favourite premium releases that uh, that you can get out there. And it's always an awesome month when one of these arrives through the post. So uh, this month, actually got two Maniacs boxes. This, The Equalizer 2, Denzel's first sequel, and uh, Tom Hardy's Venom as well. So uh, we'll go through The Equalizer 2 first. So, typical fashion inside these Maniacs boxes. Take off the uh, front cover, and there are three unique slip covers designed for this release, and also the custom steel book as well that Film Arena have made for this. So, that's the only place you can buy the Equalizer 2 steel book, which has some very awesome embossing on there, which is very, very cool. So that one is the exclusive Blu-ray and bonus disc as well for that one. Now, inside the box, there are three what Film Arena classes the XL slips. So they're a little bit wider, a little bit fatter than some of the other premium companies. And typically in these Maniacs boxes, what Film Arena have done now for quite a few of these releases is they've bundled in all three single lenticular double lenticular and standard full slip. So this one here is the single lenticular just move the box a little bit back okay so there's the first one Denzel a few explosions behind him so that's a very cool lenticular cover and on the back as I said it's just the standard slip edition there's no lenticular on the back of this one but uh, again Denzel's face very uh, very serious looking there for the movie I did enjoy Equalizer 2 I thought it was a worthy sequel to the first one and um, so of all the sequels of all the movies Denzel could have picked I'm glad he picked Equalizer 2 because I did really enjoy the first one and this uh, this double lenticular cover again explosions behind Denzel looks absolutely awesome so on the back is second part of the lenticular it's a wraparound um, which is a view of the cityscape there which is very cool and then the full slip which is also nicely presented as well which is very shiny when the light catches it and on the back of this slip again Denzel looking all menacing there with his bottom half of his chin so yeah inside these typical fashion also which i won't get out today guys is the uh, the booklets that have um art cards character cards behind the scenes of the director um also photo books as well and some production notes um so there's lots of goodies that come inside these three editions it is the same steel book inside all three as well so this steelbook here that was presented without one of these custom sleeves um, is inside all three of those editions so you do actually get four versions of this steelbook in this entire release so these maniacs editions are perfect for anyone out there who enjoyed the movie and can't pick between what artwork to get then they will chances are they'll pick up one of these maniacs boxes so it also does come with a special gift inside which was a credit card type model gift from the movie as well so some of the gifts that uh, that do come with these maniacs boxes there's a lot of time and effort gone into them this one here was a model credit card which is very cool for the movie so yeah that was very cool so i will slot them all back inside this box guys just to make some room because we're gonna have to go through quite a bit that arrived this month so. 
hopefully Phil Marina do decide to do the Equalizer 1 because it would be nice to have the first movie given this sort of treatment as well. Being fairly older now, I'm not sure if they'll have the time or the resources or if there's going to be even enough people who would purchase something like this for Equalizer 1. So it would be nice to have the first one side by side with this one. But um, yeah, I know those guys have got a lot on their plate. And just arrived this week was their version of Venom which is absolutely stunning it did come with this free gift also a little model of Venom there a little toy model which is cool so yeah the artwork on this one is absolutely stunning I'd say this is one of my favorite Maniacs boxes now that those guys have released um, a lot of people or critics at least um, unfortunately gave Venom quite a bad rap uh, I thought it was fantastic I enjoyed it um, for a movie that you can go into especially a comic book movie these days can often be a lot more serious or get criticized if they're not as serious as some of the more Marvel um, movies like Captain America Winter Soldier Civil War um, Venom reminded me a lot of the early comic book movies from sort of the early 2000s, X-Men and Spider-Man. And for that reason, just be able to go in and switch your brain off and enjoy the movie. I, I thought it was great. I really don't understand the, the hate that it did get. And I'm very happy that they are making sequels. So, yeah, um, in regards to their Maniacs boxes, very, very similar to the Equalizer 2. We've got the three XL slips, double lenticular, single lenticular and full slip. We have also got the standard steel book as well that came with the box. So that steel book also comes four times inside this box. It's one in each of these slips, and then the steel book here. And it also came with a very cool book, which I haven't actually opened yet. It is still sealed, but like I said, this, this box only arrived a few days ago, so I haven't quite broken into it all to have a look at everything that's in it. And there's some art cards here as well, which I'm looking forward to having a look at. So the artwork on all three of these slips are beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Um, if I did have to just buy one of the three, I am not sure which one I would have gone for because I, I do love all three of them. I think they're fantastic. So this is the double lenticular. So there's the front cover there for this one here, which is cool. We've got Tom Hardy, Riz Ahmed and um, Michelle Williams there which is very cool, very deep as well. We've got those in the foreground and Venom at the top there, his tongue um, is sort of coming out of the uh, out of the lenticular. We've got the Golden Gate Bridge in the background. So yeah, very cool. And then the back art is just as nice. So when I'm presenting these on the shelf, when I do find somewhere to actually put them, I'm not quite sure which side I'm gonna have displayed because I do love this back artwork as well. It's the first sort of place I've seen this one which is very cool. So that one was the double lenticular. And we have the single lenticular, which again is just as cool. The colors are very similar as well. The blues from the sky and venom, all black, uh, which is very nice. And also on the back, which just shines in the light. Hopefully that can pick that up as I'm moving it around, which is model shot of venom with the laser sights from the commandos and then we've got the full slip which two of my friends here in australia also ordered this version out of the three they uh, they didn't want to go for the maniacs for this release they went for this one each and i don't blame them it's absolutely beautiful um typically i'd always pick a lenticular over just a full slip if i only were buying one edition um but this is an absolute beauty absolutely stunning so that is the front cover and then the back is just as awesome. I think that artwork did actually get released on a steelbook um, all red, I believe. Maybe some stores around the world. Um, but yeah, it looks very nice in black and white. So very artistic and very awesome. And exactly the same as all the other Maniacs releases inside the editions. We've got extra booklets and we've got art cards, photo prints, all the rest of it. So guys, it would take literally probably a full hour to open them all up and go through them. So I will not be doing that unfortunately but if anyone wants to see any of these editions in greater detail i would be more than happy if i find the time um to make a, a separate video for them so that there not one but two maniacs editions for the month and i am very happy with those i absolutely love those editions so that is awesome now also in the premium range 
we have got this absolute beauty uh, from Manta Labs, one of my favorite OC one click release company and um, their ocs are just absolutely stunning when they do something a little bit different as they've done with first man um similar with fight club they made it out of like a silicone box um to um resemble the soap from the movie um also they did a the greatest showman uh, box which opened up in the middle and presented a pop-up like diorama display so when these guys decide to do something a little bit different as they've done with first man they've made this oc box out of material um almost like um, neil armstrong's suit and um, spacesuit it's beautiful absolutely stunning and uh, i love the fact that they've got the ultra hd logo on the top there and the uh, the american flag so yeah absolutely stunning so this also came with all three editions because it's the one click box so i will slide that off again it's just material that can bend so it's almost like a jacket for the oc which is uh, awesome because they would have had to make all of those individually um there was only 400 of these in the world so yeah very very cool i think it has sold out now unfortunately but um yeah unfortunately if you didn't pick one up but you do like the look of it um it is absolutely beautiful so we've got the classic quote from neil armstrong there one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind, and all three editions. So we have got Ryan Gosling, pretty much present on all three of them. Neil Armstrong, which is very cool. And on the back there, very rough and, and coarse over the actual um, sort of um, rubble ground um, of the moon and then the smoothness of, uh, of Neil's foot going down which is a very cool contrast hopefully the light can pick that up but yeah I love that back artwork that's absolutely stunning and then we've got the lenticular which has some very cool sort of space um, scenery um, I don't want to say explosions, but uh, yeah, there's just some cool colouring in that uh, that steelbook um, slipcover, which hopefully the light can pick that up too. I think that might be my favourite of the three, just for the colouring in it. The oranges and the blues work really well together. And then another shot of sort of the moon landing on the back. And then last but not least, another similar cover. Again, with uh, Ryan Gosling on the front, but this one has hollow foil built into it. You can see the lights as it uh, as it catches the the bulb that I've got used for the video. And then on the back there, we've got Neil with his wife. Yeah, very cool. So the movie itself, I didn't mind too much. Um, I wouldn't say it blew me away. Um, it was very, very well shot. It was very well done, especially the actual landing itself on the moon. Um, it may have turned to IMAX cameras, but they were absolutely stunning. It was like, like out of this world. And I'm sure that was the actual intention of the director. That moment when they, they just land down on the moon, it just blew me away. Um, the rest of the movie, though, I did find a little slow. I can understand they couldn't dramatize it too much with it being sort of the true account of the first man walking on the moon. Um, but in terms of entertainment value, I would say I probably preferred something like Apollo um apollo 13 a little bit more than this but direction wise i thought it was very very good i wasn't a big fan of la la land so i'm not a huge lover of the director or ryan gosling but um the actual how how the movie was filmed um i thought was very very well done technically so very happy to have that edition in the collection because it's very rare you'll get editions with these material sleeves so that oc is absolutely beautiful now Next on two, we'll start with the Arrow releases. So we'll start with the special labels. So first of all, I picked up in the buy one, get one free Arrow sale was volume two, American Horror Project, which uh, which is awesome. This uh, box goes very nicely with volume one that came out a few years ago. And because it was in buy one, get one free, I also was able to pick up uh, Jose Larez Blood Hunger box so this one comes with whirlpool the coming of sin and vampires i haven't seen any of these and it is still sealed um but as far as going for the complete arrow collection goes i am very happy to pick these up and experience some um sort of foreign horror movies that i've never seen before and also dark Orders, dream no devil and i have seen the child before but these two i haven't seen so looking forward to giving these ones a go 
And uh, yeah, so this actually came out the day it released. It is brand new, the day it was released. Um, the sale was still going on, so it went straight into the buy one, get one free sale. So uh, yeah, that was, uh, that was awesome for that to happen. And also picked up four others in the buy one, get one free. The car. Never seen this one before, but I did just pick up the sequel on a cheap DVD here in Australia. So I thought, well, before watching that, I'll, I'll watch the original. So I picked up the car. The Sender, which I know nothing about. Also a fairly new um, release from Arrow. So again, to get that in a buy one, get one free. I was happy to pick that one up. The Giver, uh, sort of a childhood classic, Mark Hamill. Um, yeah, absolutely love the Giver. So very happy to grab that one also in the buy one, get one free. It's one of the early Arrow releases that, uh, that sort of passed me by. And Schlock as well. Never seen this one, but, uh, you know, I've seen a lot of John Landis's work and this was the first film from him. So, yeah, looking forward to giving that one a go as well. Imagine that's quite a quirky, odd movie. So I picked those up in the Arrow collection. Now, in the 88 Films collection, just one this month. Sorority Babes in the Slimeball Ballerama, one of David Koto's sort of early movies. Um, in the UK, it was known as The Imp, so the artwork on the sleeve does feature the original sort of VHS artwork for The Imp. Um, yeah, an odd movie. Um, typical sort of that period from him and some of these sort of screen queens, Linear Quigley. Um, which I'm learning more about. Uh, it was only recently that I watched Nightmare Sisters and Creeperzoids. Um, it was okay. It was uh, it was quite a fun movie, um, but a little bit silly. And uh, I imagine late night with a few beers and a pizza back uh, back sort of in the late 80s, early 90s, it would have been absolutely fantastic. And I think it has gained a lot of cult uh, following from a lot of fans. So I uh, I enjoyed my time with it. It was it was fun and harmless. And I also got special label. Dead Pit. So this is from um, Dark Force Entertainment, and this is part of their Code Red range. This is number 179, and this is my first ever Dark Force release. Um, I'm a member of a few groups in Australia. One of them's a horror group, and there's a lot of cool guys on there. Um, so they were all picking up this. We put in an order together to save on shipping. So this was my first Code Red release. And it comes with this custom slipcover that if you follow the company on Facebook, they were singing the praises of this slip. They were saying it was one of the best home releases that has ever been made. Um, I don't know about that, but it is pretty cool. It does glow in the dark and it is sort of embossed as well on the zombie. And the movie itself was actually quite fun. It's not one of the better um, zombie movies to come out, certainly not sort of from this period. But um, I did actually quite enjoy it. It was quite fun. Um, young girl gets sent to sort of a... Um, a insane sort of psychiatric hospital and in the basement previously there was a doctor doing experiments on their patients and they all come back as zombies um so yeah not too bad i did have quite fun with that a few friday nights ago when i put that on and the, the slip cover is pretty cool so special labels they get quite a few from all the different companies um, also got quite a few from the Severin sale that went on recently and the first one I picked up was St. Bernard so this is an absolute mental movie absolutely insane so directed by Gabe Bartolos it's only his second movie I believe uh, I haven't seen the first movie that he did but this was only his second um, see old Warwick Davis's name there he's probably the most famous of the cast so Gabe is a special effects artist, uh, practical effects, and he's worked on a lot of sort of straight to DVD and straight to VHS um, horror movies like the Leprechaun series, or at least the first four, I believe. Um, what else has he done? He's also done um, Basket Case, and he's done quite a few. He's quite famous in the um, in sort of the horror circles. So this movie had a lot of practical effects but it was insane absolutely insane and honestly i didn't really like it um it was a lot like a student movie um in that respect there were it was very cheaply done um and it just it's a, a guy going on a journey across los angeles as he's descending more and more into madness um and one scene after another just got weirder and weirder carrying around the head of a saint bernard as he's walking around the city meeting unusual characters and um 
Yeah, it was late at night when I did put it on. It was about 11 o'clock, and by 12 o'clock, um, it was losing me. And maybe if I was in the right frame of mind, I might have appreciated it more. Um, I did read up online afterwards a lot of reviews on it. A lot of people did praise it for its insanity. But for me, unfortunately, I just didn't, uh, I didn't quite get it. So, um, but happy to have it in the collection because it is such an unusual movie. And who knows, one day um, I might give it another go and change my mind. Um, also from Severin picked up Vi, uh, which is a 1960s Russian horror movie uh, based on an opera, I believe, um, or a theater production. Um, never seen it. Didn't know anything about it, but when Severin announced they were doing this with this limited edition slipcover, I watched the trailer for it on YouTube to see if it was something I'd like. And the trailer was amazing. The movie looked like it was way more advanced for something made sort of back in that sort of period. It looked very, very artistic and very cool with some of the effects. So I am really looking forward to giving that a go, just because I've never really seen anything from that period from Russia before. So that will be cool. Um, also picked up The Beast in Heat, one of the video nasties, and this is the first time it has ever been released in high definition, the first time on Blu-ray. So, yeah, a big fan of the video nasty sort of movies. Um, during my time at university, we did a course um, about censorship, and there was a section on sort of the video nasties craze. Um, so I am trying to get all of the video nasties, especially the ones that were prosecuted. I'm trying to get them all together um, in the collection. And The Beast in Heat I didn't own, so um, it is still sealed. Haven't quite found the time to actually watch it yet. I think it is going to be quite hard to get through some of these sort of Nazi exploitation movies where were very sort of hard to hard to get through. Pretty tame by today's standards, but some of the themes in them are still very strong. Um, but yeah, happy that they released that on Blu-ray. And also picked up Robo War, which again, haven't seen, but I've got a couple of friends on Facebook who absolutely swear by this movie, say it's the best movie they've ever seen. Uh, the trailer makes it look like a cross between Robocop and the predator so it actually looked really cheap and cheesy but i think on a saturday night late night maybe a couple of beers i think i'm going to have a, a great time with this one so this limited edition came with the cd soundtrack as well so um yeah that one i'm looking forward to watching and also picked up this hemisphere of horrors box set with four movies i have well i've seen the black cat um but the others i haven't seen um co-productions between the us and the philippines so there's some in here that uh I'm, yeah, I'm really looking forward to watching. So, very, very cool box set as well from Severin for this release. So, um, yeah, the Hemisphere of Horrors. That's very cool also. So, pick those up from the, um, the Severin website during the sale. And next up on the special labels are these Eureka editions. So, you may have seen, if you watched my video last month, the... DVDs that my friend in Australia had picked up all the martial arts um, and Eastern sort of movies that I was seriously lacking in the collection. It's not something I knew much about, but having watched a few of those, it really did pique my interest. I enjoyed them. Um, and luckily, Eureka had just released two early John Woo movies. So the last hurrah for Chivalry and Hand of Death. So I watched these when this arrived. I watched these uh, Monday and Tuesday um, on the week that they arrived. And I started with Hand of Death. I believe that might have been Jackie Chan's first movie. But the quality, the picture quality on Blu-ray was like it was filmed yesterday. Absolutely beautiful. And the movie was great. And same with Last Hurrah for Chivalry. Um, both movies, I thought they were fantastic. Um, so early John Woo. Didn't see too much of John Woo's sort of um, trademark style from when he moved to Hollywood and did a lot of Hollywood movies. But it was very interesting to see sort of where he started out. And um, yeah, really did enjoy them. So that was a very cool release from Eureka. And on the actual release itself, it came with a nice booklet all about the behind the scenes um, production. And then you can actually swap between the last hurrah for chivalry or as i've got presented the hand of death cover so yeah two movies in one both on blu-ray and yeah very very cool release so i will slot that back down cool pop her back in the limited sleeve and also from eureka 
picked up Troll, one and two, and also the documentary that came out a few years ago, Best Worst Movie. So two completely different sort of movies. Troll 2 is, is completely insane. I saw it years ago on, on DVD, a really poor ex-rental DVD, I think it was. I might have picked it up um, for about 50 cents, maybe, about six years ago. Um, but yeah, um, Eureka did this very, very cool collection. And I've never seen this this um, Best Worst Movie documentary before so i'm looking forward to opening this up and giving it a go um so that arrived also and me going on a bit of a jackie chan sort of bender um picked up wheels on meals also directed by sam Hung, who was also in um hand of death as well so yeah that was uh, that was another cool release that i was able to pick up from eureka it has already been out for quite a while but i still managed to get it in its limited edition cardboard sleeve um so um i love a lot of sort of uh, later jackie chan movies especially some of the american ones that he's done i've enjoyed so to get some of his earlier ones um is going to be very nice for the collection um just need to get police story um and a few others some of his more popular movies and then i'll start looking into his more obscure ones so this box set looks fantastic as well, Once Upon a Time in China, or Jet Li. Um, again, not opened, haven't had time to open it yet, and only arrived a couple of weeks ago. So when I have time to sit down and watch all three, hopefully in an evening, um, I will crack that open and give that a go. So that's a cool box set. And on the cheap from Zavi, I was able to pick up The Entity, um, which is also a special edition Eureka Steelbook. have seen this movie before, um, an older horror movie where the entity, the poltergeist inside the home is um, haunting, um, what's the actress? Barbara Hershey, yeah. So a um, long time ago since I have seen it, it might have been a late night TV viewing for me years ago, but um, yeah, didn't own a copy in the collection and knowing that Eureka did this Steelbook and it was cheap on Zavi, very happy to uh, to find that and pick that one up. So those are the Eureka releases for the month. And next up, again, special labels. Got quite a few this, this month. Um, this one from Scream Factory in the US was their release of Night of the Creeps. Absolutely classic Fred Decker movie. Um, Tom Atkins, absolutely legend in the horror world. The Fog and Halloween 3, Maniac Cop. So this release as uh, Screen Factory do on occasion for their releases is they released it with a NECA figure, NECA doll as well. The first time Tom Atkins has ever been immortalized in doll form. Um, I do have the one of Rufus from um, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure as well, but I don't have the one that came for Silent Night and Deadly Night. But this is very cool. I love this movie, Night of the Creeps. I've seen it uh, a couple of times now. And to get this edition, um, which also came with another sleeve, as some of the Screen Factory releases do, it came with this spare... Well, it actually came with this sleeve, and this was attached to the actual Blu-ray. But I'll swap them around, because I do love this artwork. So yeah, very, very cool Night of the Creeps. Haven't opened it yet, um, but I'm sure the transfer, like all the Screen Factory releases, I'm sure the transfer is beautiful on it. I do have a local release of Night of the Creeps just on, on Blu-ray, but a cheaper edition. So I imagine the quality on this is a lot better. So Night of the Creeps. And then Indicator. Got quite a few Indicators, a label from the UK. I'll be honest, um, Apart from Arrow, these guys might be my second favourite label now. Um, I'll show you why. First of all, I picked up Scum, which I've got on an early Steelbook DVD release, an early Ray Winston movie. Uh, absolutely beautiful movie. So i um, very happy to pick up this, and I, I'm looking forward to enjoying this in high definition. So Scum, very, very cool. And um, again, haven't opened it up yet, but it does have the booklet inside it, which hopefully has a lot of interesting sort of production material for the movie. Um, and also, this box set is why Indicator now might be one of my favourite special labels. The William Castle at Columbia Volume 1. So there is a Volume 2, which I haven't picked up yet, but I am looking forward to it. I believe it's not um more horror based it might be more comedy based but this one i've watched all four of these when it arrived and loved every second of them all black and white movies um so inside here we've got character from 13 ghosts so we've got the tingler 13 ghosts homicidal and mr sardonicus so william castle 
uh, deserves to be as big as Hitchcock as far as I'm concerned. He was influenced very much by Hitchcock, but the gimmicks that he sort of added to the movies for anybody going to the cinema during this 1959 and early 60s period, um, it was like an event. It was more like a, almost like a theme park ride where he'd interact with the audience through the movie or he would add certain features to the actual screening. Um, he put electric uh, motors underneath certain seats so you got electric shocks at certain times that was through the tingler um he also in 13 ghosts um there was um i believe like a spookometer or a spectrometer and um, special goggles where you could actually if you view through the red you could see the ghost or if you viewed through the blue part the ghost would disappear so you got the choice to view the ghost in the movie or not um and mr sardonicus he actually paused the movie near the end and actually asked the audience to hold up a glowing the dark card which had a thumb up or a thumb down is how you wanted the the movie's villain how you wanted it to end whether or not you wanted him to get away with it or you wanted him to get his comeuppance so gimmicks like that you don't really hear of anymore when you go to the theater um but for the time period i imagine you know we are sort of in horror movies we are desensitized to a lot of uh, a lot of things now but at the time you know pre all of that uh, that sort of nasty gory visual horror these movies would have been absolutely just absolutely adored so i enjoyed my time so much with this box set and i um yeah i enjoyed watching the special features on them learning more about the gimmicks as well and um, yeah, I can't sing uh, William Castle's praises enough. An indicator have done such a beautiful job that I also picked up all three of these hammer box sets as well. So these only arrived earlier this week, so you can see they are still sealed. But there's four movies in each box set, so there's 12 to get through here. And what I also have discovered about indicator, what I like is that they're individually numbered along the bottom. So number 54 to 57... 58 to 61 and then this volume 3 must have come out a little bit later because it's 80, 81, 82, 83 um, William Castle's box set is 94 to 97 so um, for anybody who likes to go for a full collection um, a full series when you have all of the indicator powerhouse releases um, they're all individually numbered from 1 to maybe 170 180 now maybe um scum is a fairly new release it's only just come out and that's number 156 so i'm not quite sure how many there's been but i'd say there's probably maybe about 160 um so yeah really really looking forward to breaking into these these hammer collections the curse of the mummy's tomb the gorgon i've heard of but never seen and um, we've got the snorkel the full treatment Never take sweets from a stranger. Cash on demand, and Hammer. They are more known for their sort of um, sort of UK horror Hammer horror movies, and um, but some of these I've I've never heard of before. But um, I am really looking forward to sinking my teeth into those. Especially seeing as most of my collection is more sort of new Hollywood or movies that have come out since I've been around, you know, the past 35-ish years. And so it's really nice to sort of broaden the collection and add a lot of these older movies. So, moving on guys. I um, also picked up, we're talking video nasties earlier, also picked up this from Germany, Death Weekend. Oh, House by the Lake. So this is one of the video nasties that never received a Blu-ray release. And believe it or not, um, only came out a couple of years ago on DVD. Before that, it was in VHS hell. It never got a sort of DVD release. I think it was Sweden, maybe Sweden, Switzerland. Um, somewhere a couple of years ago released a DVD version of it. Um, and that was it. That was the only sort of... Um, you know, other than the analog VHS, that was the only sort of disc version until Germany, uh, NSM Records. They have released it in this absolutely beautiful media book. Um, yeah, on Blu-ray, the only place you can buy this in high definition. So, um, unfortunately, I can't read German, so I'm not quite sure what these production notes are saying. Maybe that's something I can do in the future and um, teach myself but um, yeah really really looking forward to seeing what the picture quality is like on this release and the artwork is beautiful and um, this one was limited to only 222 222 yeah so this one's number 28 of 222 not sure if we can see that there um there were there was five different cover versions i believe of the movie released um but this was my favorite i did like it very really classic artwork um and again it's another high definition 
video nasty that I can add to the collection. So very, very happy that one arrived. And also from Germany on the same order, I picked up a Dust Devil. So from the director of Hardware, um, quite a misunderstood movie. There's been a few releases over the years with different edits of the movie, different cuts. I think the studios were involved at one point and they, they sort of hacked it to pieces. Um, I think this is the most complete version that there's been to date. And it's got a few discs inside it and it, it, it's on Blu-ray again, so it's high definition. Um, but yeah, there's been lots of different editions. Um, so really looking forward to getting into this one i saw it years and years ago but i don't really remember it too much i maybe didn't appreciate it as much when i was a kid but um, i've done a lot of reading up on it so i'm looking forward to giving that one another go to see if my opinion changes i'm sure it will do i'm sure i'll appreciate it a lot more now in this sort of time of my life um also picked up the shazam digibook to go along with the rest of the dc digi books that i've got so this released um statewide here or nationwide here in australia um at jb hi-fi and sanity um, but i believe in america they didn't actually get this digi book to continue the rest of the range all the other dc movies have come out in these digi books um i believe maybe target it or, or best buy they got this um, lenticular cover on a cardboard sleeve but they didn't get it in these digi books which is a bit of a shame but um, yeah, unusual, those guys here in Australia, we were favoured for this release and um, yeah, I was able to, to pick this up locally and continue on the Digibook collection, so very happy about that one. And uh, one of the one of my favourite DC movies, I thought um, Zachary Levy was, was fantastic in the role. After watching Chuck, I've seen all five seasons of Chuck, it's fantastic to see him break out in this sort of lead role. Um, I know he had a bit part in four, two, maybe. Um, but yeah, very, very happy to see him in a leading role. Um, also picked up Ant Man and the Wasp to continue on the Zavi Marvel Lenticular Steelbook range. So we're now only missing, I believe, Captain Marvel um infinity war and hopefully endgame when that comes out they'll do one for that as well so i'm um, very happy that they've continued on these range of steel books with the lenticular magnets so that one also joined the collection um also on steelbook i picked up disney's dumbo tim burton's dumbo um i wasn't a big fan of the movie i'll be honest with you i missed it at the cinema um but i have been quite a big fan of the disney live action releases i thought um um the Jungle Book was was incredible. I thought Beauty and the Beast was beautiful. Um, we went to watch Aladdin at the cinema, and I did really enjoy that. Um, yeah, Guy Ritchie really surprised me with that. And I absolutely adore Tim Burton. Um, absolutely love, especially early Tim Burton movies. Um, but Dumbo, I didn't enjoy. And I think it was more the story just didn't really translate well to sort of modern audiences, maybe live action. I know it wasn't really set in this era this period but still having um having dumbo ridiculed um for his looks for his ears and um, it just didn't really translate well i think to the to the big screen so um the steelbook is absolutely beautiful the sort of circus style of the steelbook but it wasn't one of my favorites um and i do still like tim burton also picked up from uh the states dragged across concrete um so yeah really enjoyed this one not as much as probably bone tomahawk and brawl um in cell block 99 bone tomahawk has still got one of the most brutal death scenes i think i've ever seen that just oh, surprised the hell out of me when that happens and at uh, brawl vince vaughn is unstoppable he's a machine in it i absolutely love that movie um so a big fan of the director um this one was more restrained than those two movies but still had a couple of strong scenes in it um an incredible shootout towards the end um, between the robbers and the cops um crooked cops um so yeah really enjoyed this one so very happy and um when i was going through the release list at the cinema the local cinema here this wasn't actually listed to come to the cinema here in australia until like september or october and i'd seen it released uh, on amazon.com knowing you could buy it so i thought well you know seeing as we're not getting it at the cinema here until later on in the year i might as well pay the money to actually own it rather than the cinema tickets to to just watch it once so yeah very happy got that so early um 
and also picked up Hellboy. Again, a lot of hatred, a bit like Venom. A lot of people didn't like this. A lot of critics didn't like this. Um, for the most part, I can understand why. It does feel like a lot of studio interference. Um, I think there was a bit of trouble with the director as well, possibly um, not giving it all 100%. I think some things were going on with his personal life while this was being filmed. Um, it does sort of stink of lots of... Um, individual ideas separate scenes all sort of merged into one but there was a lot to like about it i did actually enjoy it a lot more than i thought i would i skipped the cinema and i'll be perfectly honest i was um i was sort of influenced by the bad reviews so i skipped the cinema um and actually enjoyed it way more than i expected to and uh, the end i won't spoil the ending but it does sort of leave it open for a sequel which would, which would introduce one of uh, hellboy's classic characters I don't think we'll ever see it, but um, I did enjoy it. And I thought David Harbour was amazing. If anyone could sort of take over the role after Ron, um, David Harbour did an amazing job. So I'm um, yeah, a little disappointed that it wasn't as well received. Um, so yeah, picked up Hellboy and also fighting with my family. So pick this one up because I do like Stephen Merchant. I think he's great. Um, watching him um, in The Office and also co-wrote The Office with Ricky Gervais. I've sort of followed his career um, and seeing him direct this movie. Again, I've spoken about Vince Vaughn. He was great in this. Um, the Rock appears just a sort of extended cameo in a couple of scenes. Um, I thought this was fantastic. Um, nice sort of uh, feel-good movie. Quite um, quite cliched um, to the point where you actually see like a montage sequence where she uh, she sort of overcomes her fears and, and um, then ends up succeeding in the WWE world. But uh, yeah, I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was a good feel good movie. Um, not really got anything bad to say about it. I enjoyed my time with it. And also, I think like everybody who has a 4K TV this month, I also picked up the Batman collection. So Batman and Batman Returns, Forever and Robin. So the two Tim Burton movies. Batman is an absolute classic. And the soundtrack by Prince is stunning. But I have always been a bigger fan of Returns. I think it is an absolute masterpiece. And it is my favourite Batman movie. Even Trump's The Dark Knight. I think everything that comes together in this movie. Danny DeVito is cast absolutely perfect as the Penguin. Michelle Pfeiffer as Catwoman, stunning. Uh, Danny Elfman's score, I think, is beautiful. There's a lot more action in this. It's a lot more gothic. Michael Keaton gets to don the suit a lot more. The Batmobile chase. Everything about Returns, I think, is just a masterpiece. And in 4K, I was blown away. It's the best it has ever looked. It was the best picture quality out of all four. Um, and it's the, and for, as far as I'm concerned, it's the best movie out of all four. So I was very, very happy that that one looked so amazing. Like the stitching in Catwoman's suit and the snow in Gotham, it just blew me away. Absolutely blew me away. And I also picked up Mothra Steelbook. So I did mention, if you watched um, one of my videos previously, that I'm trying to get all of the Godzilla movies. Um, so Mothra, I'm very happy. This one got a Steelbook release, and it was very cheap as well off Amazon. So yeah, I haven't seen it, never seen the movie. I know Mothra just featured in the Godzilla 2 King of the Monsters. I haven't seen Mothra in any of the earlier Godzilla movies either, but this one I'm looking forward to watching. So pick that one up too. And... Ooh, got a couple left over. Um, one other limited edition from Zavi for Captain Marvel. So I held off buying the local steelbook um, for Captain Marvel because I had this on pre-order, which came with the standard Worldwide Art steelbook, which is this one here. You've probably seen this um, this artwork a lot. It did get released worldwide. Um, so this box um, had mixed reviews um, from collectors online a lot of groups that i'm a part of um a more hate than than praise for it to be honest and i can understand why the cost of this it was very expensive for what you actually got it is pretty cool then it does actually light up i'm not quite sure I actually might just turn the light off to see if you can see that a little better yeah that's very cool um so it does actually light up which is very nice and it did come with a lot of sort of uh, memorabilia inside some pins and that um 
and the 4K Steelbook as well, which here alone was about $50 just to buy this here in Australia. So to get it in this release was nice. Um, they've also, Xavier doing one for Spider-Man Far From Home and also Endgame as well, which I do have on pre-order. Um, I know a lot of collectors, when they received theirs from Xavi, they thought it was very overpriced for what it was. Um, so they either asked for their money back, sent it back to get a refund, or they tried to sell it third party they tried to to get rid of theirs they weren't really happy with with the quality but i quite like it um but i will completely admit and agree with those guys that it is very overpriced for what it was or what it is so um that arrived and last but not least is this edition from germany from dusk till dawn so this one here is the three media books we're in this faux leather box, very similar to last month's um, Ginger Snaps trilogy that also came from Germany. But this box is very cool, shining in the light there from, from Dust Till Dawn. Um, like a few releases that often come out um, that slip past, um, I guess, um, the people that are paid to check over the spelling and uh, make sure that everything is uh, correct um, the quality control guys they unfortunately missed the G in daughter not quite sure if that can pick that up but uh, yeah so unfortunately from Dust Till Dawn 3 will now forever be known as the Hangman's Douther so pretty funny um i know hmv uh, last year they released a, a blu-ray of scarface in a vhs box and they misspelt vengeance on the box and that was released nationwide so it does happen occasionally that releases are sort of um are missed um spelling mistakes are missed um i don't mind it too much i think it's funny more than anything and the box itself is still very very cool um from Dust of Dawn is still an absolute classic for me. I think it's a beautiful movie. I think it's fantastic. It's uh, funny and scary, and I love the soundtrack and the action. Um, from Dust of Dawn 2, I think the only good thing about that one, I've only seen it once, but I remember Robert Patrick being quite good. And um, From Dust of Dawn 3 was a prequel. Um, might have been set sort of during the cowboy era. I can't really remember it too much, honestly. Um, but yeah, very cool edition from Germany in a very nice box. So guys, I did say that was the end, but I completely lied to you. There's actually a couple more. So I will just move these out of the way so I can get to it. So also from Germany was this awesome Never Sleep Again uh, media book, the documentary about the Elm Street sort of legacy. So I have all of the other Nightmare on Elm Street editions in these sort of faux leather media books. Um, so very, very happy to pick this one up. Again, I'm going to have to learn German because uh, I have no idea what any of this is saying. Um, huh, cool artwork there from the Goldbergs. Um, yeah, so um, very, very good documentary. I've seen it before. I do have a copy of Never Sleep Again on Blu-ray, but in order to continue on the range of media books um, for the Nightmare on Elm Street series, um, I was happy to pick this up. And the best thing about this release, and another reason why I picked it up, is it actually came free with a box to house all of the media books in the Nightmare on Elm Street media books. So it came with this free box, this Nightmare Memories box, which is very cool. And if I turn it around, I'd already bought these, so I put these in this box. It's the Complete Nightmare on Elm Street Media Book Collection. So that's the artwork that's on the spines of them. So just for an example, let's take one out. These are, ooh, these are what I have displayed on my beam at the top with the Friday the 13th Media Books. So these are very, very cool. Unfortunately, picked uh, Nightmare on Elm Street 6, um, the final nightmare um not the best but uh, yeah these media books are very very awesome very cool so it's a little bit of a shame that they didn't actually make space for never sleeps again in this box to have uh, to have it in there but uh, yeah as a as a complete set um i think it's amazing one day hopefully someone might release um a complete box set of nightmare on elm street with freddy's glove uh, like a model, uh, maybe nameless media in Germany might do something like that. But for the time being, that is now the best Nightmare on Elm Street edition that I own. So guys, um, one other thing, one other thing. Um, I was able to pick up cheap um, on Gumtree here in Australia. Um, a friend sort of alerted me to these being for sale. 
Um, so I jumped on it. I contacted the seller because I don't own any of these. And it's the Star Trek Voyager capsule boxes. So it's the DVD releases of Star Trek Voyager. So that one is season four. And I was able to pick up all seven. The seller was selling them all. So managed to grab every single one in one go. So there is all seven seasons. I won't, I won't drag them all over now, otherwise it'll fill the entire counter. But the best thing that um, you don't really see anymore, especially in these old releases, um, from a from a third party seller, from a private seller, is the J cards, the cardboard slips. Every single release, all seven seasons, still had these cardboard sleeves. Not in bad condition either. So that was very rare to actually find somebody who's kept these. A lot of people that I speak to, a lot of people that I know, they'll just throw these away. They've got no room for them. There's no reason to keep them. Or over time, they just degrade and they start to sort of fall apart. But um, yeah, what um, what I found out afterwards was, because these released way before um, I moved to Australia, so I had no idea how much these were supposed to be um, price-wise. Um, apparently, these sold each season for about $200 when they originally released just one, just for one season, about $200, which I can kind of believe because um, back in the UK, when I first started buying DVD TV shows, something like The Sopranos season one and X-Files season one and um, Angel as well, you know, they were about 80 to a hundred pounds just for a TV series, just for one season. So I can, I can kind of believe that these were about 200 when they released. Um, so I got all seven seasons with the J cards for 50 bucks, $50, which is an absolute bargain. And since I didn't have any of the Voyager series, I've got the next generation. Um, and I've, uh, I've got a couple of the others, Deep Space Nine. I absolutely jumped at the chance to get all seven of these. So, yeah, $50, absolute bargain of the month. Probably going to be bargain of the year, to be honest, for me. So, very happy with those also. So, guys, now that actually is it. So, um, yeah, thanks again for watching. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed this month's video. And if you've got any questions or you'd like to discuss any of these releases, please don't hesitate to leave a message. I always enjoy reading them all. So yeah, thanks again guys for tuning in and I will see you next time. Okay, thanks. Bye.